For the longest time, I've used a laptop as my personal choice for entertainment, answering emails, getting work done, editing videos, and the most important one, watching YouTube videos. That's why for the most part, my ordinary base model iPad was nice, but was left collecting dust for periods at a time. But this isn't your grandma's iPad. This is the 11 inch iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard, and it replaced my precious MacBook for over a month. Learning curve aside, was it worth the switch? Who is this type of setup for? Would I recommend it? Let's find out with a little review. If you're looking for a review of the Magic Keyboard itself, you can find it up here. So I won't go into that too much. Instead, I'll focus more on the usability and if this combo had any effect on my workflow, whether that be in a positive way, a negative way, sideways, upways, all the ways. First, I wanna talk about general use. What is it like using it as my only machine day to day? Also, I am clearly a video editor. I write up, film, and edit every video on this channel. So transitioning my YouTube process will be pretty interesting. I also multitask a lot, meaning I might be watching a video, writing, and have multiple internet tabs open. So adaptability to different workflows is necessary, well, at least for my sanity. Lastly, I was gonna try to see if this iPad would be great for travel, but I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I haven't been outside much, cause yeah, um, yeah. Using only the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard as my go-to device was really interesting. I found that it was so much more portable than my MacBook Pro. And you would think the iPad would be less comfortable than a laptop to use on a desk, but for the most part, it feels exactly the same. And because the iPad is floating, if you compare the iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard with a 13 inch MacBook at the iPad's max tilt, you'll find that the screen reaches the same height, meaning it wouldn't add any extra strain on your neck or back to look at it. I also found that in some areas, it was more comfortable to use the iPad Pro, like in bed or just using on a chair or sofa, because while the Magic Keyboard provides you a decent writing experience, you may forget that this is still an iPad and a case together, so you can still just remove it and use it like an iPad. Here's a few positions I found comfortable in using the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard combo in, courtesy of my last video. Enjoy. So there are some not so fun ways to use the device too. All of the weight of the device is in the back. So you have to be careful to not let it all tip over, which it tends to do. Basically, it thinks it can do backflips, but it can't. Now let's talk about how it affected my video editing process. Writing on the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard is fine. On the 11 inch Magic Keyboard, the keys are a little smaller. So there's an adjustment period of knowing where to press with your fingers. There are also plenty of great apps you can use to write notes, or you can stick to tried and tested Microsoft Word and Google Docs. I personally just type everything in Google Docs because it just makes it easier to send it over to my teleprompter. Also, the last three videos I've put up on my channel have all been scripted and written on this setup, and it did that all just fine. I would say the writing experience is almost as enjoyable as the laptops. When it comes to actually editing the video, the process is a breeze. Thanks to the extra port provided by the Magic Keyboard, you can charge the iPad and plug in your SD card to import your clips straight onto the iPad. From there, I used LumaFusion, a robust NLE for iPads. And wow, this could get the editing job done for most YouTubers. Probably not for professional studios, but for your average Joe YouTuber, this is fantastic. Editing 4K video is smooth with no hitches and it has most of the bells and whistles I had when I was using Final Cut Pro. It supports external monitors and it even has the ability to export the current project you're working on into a Final Cut Pro project file. Meaning you can start your projects in LumaFusion and finish it off on any Mac. Just note that that's an additional paid add-on. There are some limitations with it and I do feel like I'm a bit slower editing on LumaFusion, but that may be because I'm just so used to editing everything in Final Cut Pro and not LumaFusion. But overall, that's a compelling case for turning the iPad Pro into a mobile video editing station. It's highly doable and in my opinion, surpasses the 4K editing experience I had on the 2020 i5 MacBook Air. And overall, very useful. As for making thumbnails, 
Well, that's just the RT borderline too much clickbait side of me. And the Apple Pencil in Affinity Photo, a Photoshop alternative, gets the job done better than if I was doing it on my MacBook with a trackpad using the exact same application. Using the Apple Pencil made editing my thumbnails a breeze that just couldn't be done with a trackpad. But because I'm not an artist, I can't personally vouch and say, replace your laptop and drawing tablet for this because that would be ignorant of me. So please look into this further by yourself. These are just my thoughts on the subject. Now, how well does the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard do for multitasking? Well, for that, your mileage may vary. Some apps work great with iPadOS's split view and slide over, such as Apple's built-in apps or most of Google's suite of software. But some apps just plain don't want to work with that functionality, meaning you're forced into only using full screen mode with those particular apps. When split view and slide over does work the other 90% of the time, it's honestly very comparable to a laptop multitasking experience. So this is my conclusion. It's gonna be pretty long, so. I'm sorry guys. For the most part, the iPad Pro adequately does the job of my laptop from simple things like web browsing, writing, and watching funny YouTube videos. It can also do some heavier lifting things such as 4K video editing and some photo editing. But iPad OS doesn't have as many professional grade apps that Windows or Mac OS has. And if you have specific programs you need to use, it might not be available for iPad. That being said, I think the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard could replace laptops for 90% of people. For a lot of people around me who aren't as tech savvy, it already has. The truth is, it's pretty easy to learn iPad OS for many people because it's so similar to another thing that already sits in our pockets. But for people who need specialized software that runs only on desktop operating systems, this isn't it. And second conclusion here, the price of an iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard is pricier than Apple's MacBook Air. And if you opt for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard, you could easily afford a MacBook Air and a base model iPad. But this is the part that really concerns me. The iPad Pro is a fantastic tablet, but with the Magic Keyboard, it can be a fantastic tablet most of the time and a mediocre laptop some of the time. The iPad Pro is the most versatile device Apple sells. But if you already own a laptop, you can buy a regular iPad or a Pro and skip the $300 keyboard altogether since you already have a device to get your typing related tasks done. If you already own a laptop and an iPad Pro, there's no need for the keyboard. Dropping $300 wouldn't be wise. If you own an iPad Pro and no laptop and need an okay laptop experience, this could be it. If you don't have either of those things, then this is for someone who wants ultimate portability, versatility, wants one device to do everything, and doesn't mind the minor trade-offs. Personally, I'm using it for work trips so I can get some YouTube work done without overloading my luggage. And because TSA has a really bad habit of abusing my MacBook and tossing it around everywhere. Overall, I'm really impressed with how suitable of a laptop replacement it can be. And I'll definitely be using it a lot more. But you gotta understand that by going this route, there are some minor trade-offs that can make or break the experience. Anyway, guys, what do you think? Is this it? Does this push you personally over to using an iPad as your primary computer? Or do you think it's still not good enough? Leave all that down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.